Hi, I'm recording this video for my GC A-level electronics students. It might be of interest to other people who are going to program a PIC microcontroller. This is a PIC 16F88 microcontroller in assembly. And we're also going to use a PIC kit like this one. OK, so I'm going to do the programming in circuit. In other words, I don't need to take the microcontroller out. Now, we're going to do something fairly simple. Uh, the code is... Uh, not terribly long. I mean, assembly code is always a little bit long, okay, even for a very, fairly trivial thing. But we're going to maybe focus on a particular part of that code, which is going to be flashing some LEDs on and off. I'll probably post some additional videos just so that one video doesn't get too long uh, in the uh, subsequent videos. If you're interested, if you're interested, do add a comment. Uh, I can then show you about like uh, setting up the oscillator, uh, configuring the ports and doing the delay routine as well. But just in this video, we're going to look at a particular aspect of the code. Now, uh, what this circuit does as it's programmed at the moment, it's this, by the way, is just a power on LED. So that's just like when when the circuit's powered, that LED is going to illuminate. And then uh, these are the uh, green and the red LED here. Uh, they are going to be controlled by the microcontroller. And the green LED is going to come on and then uh, it comes on and then there's a short delay and then the uh, red led is going to flash a fixed number of times and then the green led is going to go off and i'll just show you that green on and then the red flashed twice and then the green goes off okay so let's just prove that we've programmed the microcontroller to do that so what i'm going to do turn the power off connect the pick kit and then turn on again make sure the circuit's powered okay and we're going to have a look at my code and we'll have a look in more detail in a while as to what the code does but just for a moment let's just change that number there that's the one which is controlling my uh the number of times it loops and then we will download the new code notice down here we've got an output window it says it's uh, connecting it says the device is raised it's programming and verify is complete so that's done Turn the power off, disconnect the picket, turn the power on. Now remember this, uh, if it works correctly, uh, then the red LED should flash uh, three times. So one, two, three, and then the green LED goes off. So clearly it's working correctly. So uh, that being so, let's have a look at the code in a little bit more detail. Like I say uh, earlier, I'm not going to show you all the code because I think that just makes the video too long. Just concentrate on this bit. So first of all, this is the body uh, of my main code. It comes under this uh, code directive and it's got the label main prog. OK, that could be labeled however you like. Uh, this start label is the thing that um, we are going to at uh, address zero when uh, we've well, this this code block starts address zero and address zero is uh, what the program counter will be set to. Uh, when the microcontroller is started up um, at that address we've got one instruction which says go to the start label so we look there's the start label so the first instruction is to call the initialization routine now we're not going to look at that initialization routine now but it configures the oscillator speed and the ports the next thing then we're going to call 500 millisecond delay subroutine which is up here somewhere okay but don't worry about that uh, then we're going to bank select bank cell is the uh, is an assembly directive and that's the easiest way we can make sure that we are in the correct bank now the alternative way to to uh, making sure that you're in the correct memory bank which I'll be explaining in just a moment is to uh, manipulate the rp0 and rp1 bits of the status special function register which actually makes it sound a lot more difficult than it is but bank cell is even easier so this is the uh, a memory map of the general purpose file registers for the pic 16 f 88 and you'll see that there are four banks bank zero one two and three uh, because we want to do something with port b we need to make sure that we are using a bank which contains port b now, if you look at this, you'll see that port B is in bank zero. Port B is actually also uh, mapped in uh, 
bank two. So it doesn't matter if you're in bank zero or bank two, but if you're in bank one or bank uh, three, you won't be able to access the contents of fault B. And then what we do, we're going to set bit set files. We set a named bit. That bit is RB4. We're going to set that bit. In other words, we're going to set it to a logic high uh, of the port B uh, special function register. OK, and so that's going to turn our green LED on. Then I call the delay routine. And now next uh, command or next instruction is to move a literal value, a literal value is like a number like one, two, three, whatever, into the uh, working file register. Now I've chosen to express the number, the literal value is a decimal number. Uh, so I've done dot three. It doesn't mean 0.3. It doesn't mean like, you know, 0 0.3. Uh, it just means the dot just means this is a decimal number. Okay. Uh, if you prefer, if you wanted to do something three times, I mean, you could, if you wanted, say that, that that's the same thing. Okay, binary one, one is, yeah, three. All right. Uh, you could also, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. You could do, you could do that as well. That's, that's also loading three into the working file register. But, you know, I, I just think that if you want three, why don't you just say three dot three. Okay. If you want to confuse people, OX3, uh, uh, hex decimal 3. Okay, but you know, why? Dot 3 to me sounds good. Okay, uh, so we got that in the working file register, and then you're going to move the contents of the working file register into the file count. Now, count is just a symbolic constant for a number, um, and that number is then used to access that particular memory address. Let's have a quick look. I don't want to do too much uh, other stuff outside of this this block of code here but we just have a quick look and you'll see that I've used the C block we, uh, we do more about that in, in another video but uh, count there I've defined the symbolic constant of count okay uh, it's the symbolic constant of count is going to have a value of 71 temp gets 70 so this block starts 70 70 OK, don't need to worry about those numbers for the moment. Do that in another video. So we move three, number three, into the text decimal address in one. Then there's a loop label. And so now we're going to get this is the uh, main uh, loop. You can see we've got the loop here and then we've got go to loop. So it can go around, and around, and around, and around. And so what we're going to do, we're going to turn the first uh, red LED on and then uh, call a delay of 500 milliseconds. And then we turn the LED off and delay 500 milliseconds. Now, this is the thing which does the branching. We're going to, or this actual line doesn't, but this decrements the file. So decrements the file. So you might think, well, what does that mean? It means like, um, it means to subtract one. Okay. So if count was previously loaded with three, we've now subtracted one. So three minus one is two. And then this second parameter here specifies that now with that value of two we need to save that back into the file okay now that's really important you have to understand that now it's going to be saved back into the file so what was three will now be changed to two if you forget to uh, to specify that second argument it's effectively that okay zero because of absence of that argument and that will actually then Take the three, take the number three, which was the current value that's saved in count, decrement by one, which will give you two, and then it will save the two, the number two, into the working file register. In other words, it will not update uh, what we refer to as count. And that's going to cause you a big problem. So you need to make sure that you either type one, which isn't particularly intuitive, or you say F. Now in the uh, in this uh, include file, F equates to 1 and W equates to 0. So uh, if you wanted to make sure that it just, or if you want to be explicit, that it's going to update the, uh, save that value back into the working file register, so you could write W if you want to make sure that, or to be explicit, that it updates the uh, the file, so it saves that value back into count, then you need to say F. Okay, 
Right, the next, um, if you've got a question about that, just, just post a comment. So the next thing then, so we've decremented, so we had three, we've decremented by one, so now we've got two, and then we need to test whether we got zero. So now we're saying bit test file. So we're only going to test a bit, so that's quite important. So bit test, not byte test, but bit test. We're going to look, at, we're going to inspect a bit in a file. The file is the status File. The status is a, there you go, okay, status, 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 status is a special function register file which is available in all four banks, so don't need to do a bank select there. Um, and the status uh, register or file has a number of bits, and one of those bits is called the Z bit. And if the Z bit is set, so in other words, if the Z bit is a one, it means that the previous uh, operation resulted in a zero. So um, if, say, we take three and we subtract one, we've got two. So that didn't result in a zero, so the Z bit will not be set. Uh, and because if the Z bit is not set, because bit test file skip if set, well, it's not set, Z is not set, so we're not going to skip the next line. So we then execute. Next thing we do is we execute go to loop. So it's going to go back to that instruction and then it's going to do the same. So remember, we've now got two and then we um, decrement by one. So two is now one. It's still Z bit still not set. So then it goes to loops again and then it's got one decremented by one again, which now so one decrement one. The, um, the answer to that is um, zero, so the status uh, Z bit is now set one. So bit test file, skip if set, well Z is set, so then we're going to then um, skip the next uh, line, which is go to loop, and then we're going to do a bit clear file, which is going to turn my green LED off, just like I've said there, and then I just loop forever uh, there, which basically did nothing. Okay, well, nothing that you can see. Hopefully that makes some sense. If you want more, I can explain about how I got the delay routine. The delay routine, I use this online generator. But having said that, I did use the online generator, but then I've modified some code because, for example, that cblock directive as is, isn't going to be uh, compatible with your code if you're one of my students. So we need to modify that. Uh, other things, uh, I could show you the initialization routine, explain why and what I've done there. And uh, yeah, so if you want any of that stuff, we can have a look at the um, assembly, uh, MPASM assembler user's guide. I think it's really useful. Quite happy to show you through that. Uh, we could also have a look at the pinouts for the pick kit and um, how I made, because remember, you need to be able to wire one of these up. And, uh, by the way, if you haven't seen the video previously, this little header, let's see if I can just move this around a little bit, uh, this little header, I've got a video somewhere that I recorded a couple of years ago, maybe now, it shows you how to solder that up so it's easy to connect the pick uh, into the circuit. Okay, that's it. Yeah, if you like it, if it's useful, if you want more, please subscribe, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.